Hello, this is David Nutt. I'm chair of Drug Science. And I want to welcome you to our Ask David Anything series of questions. So Harry asks, there's been lots of warnings regarding the substitution of fentanyl into other drugs. Has the use of dangerous cutting agents increased? This very important question, and, and, and fentanyl and the fentanyls are the things that worry me most about uh, the changing landscape of drug use. They're not cutting agents. They're drugs, powerful, often lethal drugs. I think it's worth just exploring a little bit more about why they exist and where they're going. So fentanyl is a painkiller. It was the first non-opioid strong analgesic. It's been around for nearly 40 years. It's used in surgery, it's used in anesthesia, it's used in cancer pain, it's used in, for children who have severe pain, burns, etc. It's an extremely effective painkiller. And in general, there's been very little misuse or abuse of fentanyl. There was one outbreak of, of death in New York back in the, I think, the late 1980s when a pharmacy was uh, ransacked and fentanyl hit the streets. But that was a little blip, and mostly people carried on using heroin or, or other opiates. And the problems with fentanyl started about five years ago, and they, they started because it became harder for the black market to get supplies of the opium poppy product, Thebane, to make heroin. And that was because the United Nations, in its wisdom, or that's irony, by the way, decided to curtail the production of the poppy plant, thinking that that would stop people making heroin. Well, it, it did. <laughs> but the black market didn't stop wanting to make opiates. And as it was almost predictable, if you take away the source of one particularly powerful drug, the people who were supplying that drug will look to find another source. They couldn't find another source to make heroin, so they then looked for an alternative to heroin. And they came across fentanyl. And then they realized that fentanyl, which has been, as I said, around for 30 odd years, was the perfect drug for large scale illicit manufacture. The first thing is, it's about 50 times more potent than heroin. The second is, it's about a third the price to make. So that gives it a profit margin of 150 times that of heroin. They began to wonder, why weren't we making this stuff before? You know, one has to wonder about that. They, they clearly just didn't need to because they were making enough money from heroin. But anyway, they started making fentanyl. And then they also realized that you could buy the precursor. The precursor was legal. You could buy gallons of precursor for virtually nothing. And you could do the final chemical transfer from the precursor to the active ingredient in your kitchen. So it was a really simple way of making a very powerful opiate. And fentanyl started being sold as, uh, as a proxy for heroin. Uh, it was also being sold as in tablets, oxycodone tablets, which didn't have oxycodone but had fentanyl in it. It emerged as being sold as anything. It was psychoactive. We see our cases of fentanyl being in vaping fluid and being in, sold as ecstasy tablets. And if fentanyl wasn't bad enough, once the chemists who were started working out how to make fentanyl, they suddenly realized there's loads of fentanyls. There's hundreds of different fentanyls. I think 140 different fentanyls have been found being sold as opioid alternatives. And some of these are ridiculously potent. And so there's one particularly called carfentanil, which is used by vets to bring down big animals like rhinos and, and elephants. It's so potent and dangerous that vets are not allowed to use it alone. They have to have two vets present all the time in case one accidentally pricks themselves with the, with the needle, uh, the, the dart that's got the carfentanil. Someone has to give them an antidote before they die. So carfentanil is a thousand times more potent than heroin. It's so potent that the people that make it don't know how to weigh it out in the amounts that they want. So they just bung it into whatever they're trying to sell. And we've got no quality control at all. So we've created this monster. The fentanyl monster has been created by the attempt to eliminate heroin use by preventing production. It's just one of the many examples of how prohibition leads to worse and worse harms. 
And I don't know where it's going to end. 20,000 deaths from fentanyl in America last year. We had about 70 deaths in Britain. It could end up being the biggest drug problem there's ever been because it's so potent. It's also fast-acting, so people often die before they can get the antidote naloxone in. So just another example of how prohibitionist policies, but and in this case particularly the attempt to eliminate heroin by curtailing production of opium, has just led to a monstrously greater problem. If you like my answer, please leave a review and a rating on your podcast app. For tickets for our live podcast on psychedelics on the evening of the 13th of November in London, go to the drugscience.org.uk website. You'll also find a lot of very useful information there. And of course, you can tweet me at Prof David Nutt or hashtag AskDavidAnything to get your questions answered.